you live for those days when the band is together because nothing can quite equal it. Well, first of all, it's it's been a long time since we've all played together. Um, the last time we were all together was Madison Square Garden in late 2019. So it's it's a bit of a reunion for everybody. It feels like a family, and like all those things, when you get together again, it feels like you're just carrying on from where you left off. It feels like no time's gone by. You cover a lot of ground artistically on this record in terms of different styles, don't you? I mean, it, it, it goes across a wide range. Oh, yeah. You've got so much, you've such a palette, a, such a wide range of skills. Very often with this band, the actual first take is probably, is very, very often going to be the take. Mark likes for people to think for themselves, so that the musicians to go play what you think you should play, you know. But he has also immediately hears what's working and not working and has attention to the detail of what he's hearing back. And his direction is very, um, it's really helpful. I mean, it really keeps things on track. Both him and Guy, the way they work together is, is uh, they really complement each other and they kind of have each other's back. Ahead of the game is about playing the hits. I was thinking about Nashville and saw all the country music that's been played in all of these bars that you're walking past. They're all playing the hits. You forget that, you know, there are thousands of musicians who are working every night of the week. What I was trying to say is that's an achievement. It's nothing but the hits in a room downtown. The noisy as hell but nice. Time or twice. You had you a regular spot. They were even advertising your name. Better than the usual thing you got. Staying just ahead of the game. Ahead of the game. The individual songs, you can see them coming together very quickly. I mean, with guys like that, with a band like that, you're in. You're in a game where you play, you're making the, the thing, the thing is happening, whether you like it or not, almost too fast for you. You know, you could push the pace, push it along, and you could be, you know, if you had only had a week to do it, you could do it very easily. Uh, so I try and give myself a little bit more breathing room. The fatal thing a lot of the time, and certainly as far as I'm concerned, would be to rush. You know, musicians don't have the luxury, you're just at it the whole time, yeah. whereas Mark and Guy, they do create this this thing going, let's listen to that tomorrow, because your head's different the next day, or you hear things differently, tempos, or, you know, what you played. That's a real, that's a beautiful luxury to have when making a record. When did you know that One Deep River was, was lining up to be the title track? Just that it fitted as a phrase? I didn't connect it with the, the album per se, but, but the river and the Tyne and the bridge, and the, it's never very far away. Crossing the Tyne is always, it's always on your mind, and that's what, what you were doing when you were leaving as a youngster. And it's, that feeling is always the same every time you do it, you know, every time you're heading out, or every time you're coming back. There was a train leaving for a big beat in a big life. Are you coming? I may have asked you once or twice.